Okay, everybody, we're somewhere. I don't even know the name of this place. What is the... Valley Thrift. Okay, yeah, this apparently is like the biggest thrift store in the entire universe. And we are going to uh, check it out. I've heard about it. I'm here with Jocelyn from Crazy Lamp Lady, Kate from Follow That Bug Vintage, and there's Jacob from Burner Brothers. And hello, everybody. We are going to have some fun. Pink means there's no sale today on it. If it's blue, it's 25% off. But it won't be the color blue. It will actually say B-L-U-E on the bottom. Oh, okay. It won't necessarily be a blue color be, tag. Yeah, it won't. Okay. But it will say, like, you can see on the bottom how it's written out. Yeah. That's what your tag will look like. Oh. And then you'll know if it's 25, 50, or 70, depending on what that. Oh, that's awesome. Thank you for telling me. I haven't been here before. Oh, that's great. Well, very nice lady just told us how it works. So we're going to go look for stuff. Look how huge this place is. Well, right away, there's a cute little Victorian music cabinet. And this is some sort of a transfer pattern. It's not a real inlay, but it is really from about 1900. These are really handy in this day of paper pushing where there's a lot of areas to separate things. It'd be good in an office. I think a lot of people are using these for this. It seems a little rattly, but that's probably just because of where it's sitting. And how much is this? And what color is the tag? Well, I don't see a price. Maybe this is just for display. Very cute though and they fit in a small space. Okay, we had to go halfway through this giant store just to get to the hard goods, so there are a lot of clothes here. Yeah, why not? I mean, at the thrift store price? Yeah. Yes, she went right to the clothes, which is actually probably the smart thing. Hey, that would be great to do the whatnot showing right here. Yeah. Or whatnot, what do you think? There you go. I think we could do that. <laughs> Iris and Herringbone, $4.99. Alright. Next aisle, that yep. we got. Fill a cart challenge. Fill a cart. Fill a cart. The next challenge is fill a cart. I'm scared. <laughs> I'm unfilling my cart. <laughs> You're so close, George. Here's the aisle challenge. I get this one. Yeah, they're arguing over who gets the next one. We'll see at the end who finds the best stuff. And I'm not so sure that uh, I picked the right aisle, but we're going to take a look. Ah, Boy Scouts. I do have a collector for these. Stein Incorporated, 1982. And this one's going to be a Wendell August Forge, I believe. Oh, this is uh, out of Grove City, Pennsylvania. And this one actually says that it's bronze. I mean, it's heavy enough, it's probably worth that much just for weight, and I believe blue was what percentage off? We're going to have to look at that uh, footage again to find out. Okay, let's see what else we can find on this aisle. This looks like the calico pattern, or one of the fruit patterns by Cambridge out of the 1930s, but it has had a hard life. Oh, Cabot Shaw. Okay, this is part of the W.S. George, and this is called... Uh, W.S. George was another Ohio dinnerware maker. Country gentleman, very similar to the calico pattern, but terrible condition, unfortunately. So far, I haven't even been looking on this side. I see one lamp cover for a 1930s lamp. These are great if you need one, but they're a very specific thing where they hung from little ball chains. And so if you don't have those, you have to find some other way to use this. And actually, this would be a fun repurposing project. Put in the comments what you think we could do with these. We are Devo. I am in Ohio, after all. And then above, there are baggies full of stuff. And they could throw anything in here, like there's a bunch of makeup in here. That might be a good deal. Although I'm not really that kind of a reseller. But I can see where a general line reseller would just have a ball in this place because there is just so much of everything and the prices are super cheap. Uh, for me, as a vintage reseller, you know, I'm a little more limited because I'm looking for particular things. But this is kind of fun. I love the stylized pig. This is right out of the early 70s. It's in bad condition, unfortunately. But what a great graphic, and it's an old pressure cooker. A high fashion wig. Okay, I know mugs sometimes are a thing. Let's take a look at what this one is, but this is pretty new. And new just is not my role which is why this Santa is probably not my role either. I think I'm missing out because I'm on the plush aisle. I think they got the better aisles. I'm going to sneak a peek at what Jacob is looking at there. Oh, now I feel better. <laughs> this old guy is awfully new. Oh, I love the big colorful snake. 
a good draft extruder for the door, I guess. But I have to say my aisle is not producing a whole lot. So I'm not sure I'm going to win the aisle challenge. Let's see what this baseball mitt is. If this is signed by somebody good. But no, this is pretty recent. Well, darn. Is it cheating to look at the stuff across the aisle? Because I do like this 1970s fondue pot, and that does not seem to be a chip. And it's an electrical one. Yeah, that's just some schmutz. It's an electric one, and it has the cord, so it should work. And I did buy those fondue forks with the idea that I would find a fondue pot to go with. So now, if this tape will come off and they haven't destroyed it with it, I think I might have a winner. This does not look like your usual merchandise. <laughs> I mean, Twister, do we, it's got, like, that could be the challenge in itself when we get done. <laughs> yeah, I would do that. <laughs> oh, I like that base. I did get a cool base. Yeah, I got a few things in here. I'm getting there. It's not bad. It's not bad. I, I have to debate on the Twister. I'm, I'm not sure that I'm going to win this challenge. <laughs> Cheated. Yes, <laughs> cheating counts. You came to her aisle, yeah. I think I'm going to, too. I don't like my aisle. <laughs> okay. She called them interesting. I think that means it's not cute. That means it's not cute. Uh, yeah, that's one of those loaded words, isn't it? Oh, yeah. There we go. Yeah, he's, he's weird. Weird is okay. Yeah. This is good. Oh, those are good. Oh, those are fine. Yeah, especially a whole pack for the prices that they charge. I can't get over how cheap everything is here. And then I grabbed these. I wasn't sure about these. I just, they're they're Thailand. Yeah, but yeah, you know, for the price, I mean... Uh, they are 99 cents? Well, well, but it's green and that might be 75% off. I can't quite keep track. I know blue's 25 and then green's the other one, so... I'm like, it's green? I'm like, it's black. But yeah, it says, green. it says green. That's yeah, yeah. That's what they explained to me. Is it says it? It's not actually the color. Hmm. I don't know. How do we judge who won? I know I didn't. I only got three things. Well, I got a big piece on the bottom. I see that. I got the big brass magazine rack and money for me at the auction. Really? Oh, that's interesting. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's good to know. I know there are specific ones that occasionally you'll go, like the the dolly ones are okay, but that's interesting to know that the Asian the style. Asian style, Asian scenes with the Asian writing on them. I interesting. Oh, uh, well, they do have a good look, and I suppose maybe it's people, I mean, is it people in Asia buying them, or yeah, do you? Yeah, it's uh, uh, I've got some, uh, some Chinese guys that are friends of mine, and they they keep it. Oh, interesting. Oh, thank you. That's good information. I, did, yeah. I wouldn't have thought because usually, I mean, most of these you can use for skeet shooting. Uh, right. Well, you can pick them up for two and three dollars all the time. And oh, yeah. Sometimes they don't do anything, but when I when I pick them up for a couple, three bucks each, I'll throw them in the auction and every once in a while, like I said, oh, cool. brings a crazy amount of money. Oh, thank you. That's really good to know. Well, I wouldn't have even guessed. <laughs> yeah, right. Exactly. Because, yeah, most of them, ooh, forget it. Norman Rockwell, no. Yeah. Okay, this is something that is very specific to a place I'm going. Winshuler's was a restaurant in Battle Creek, Michigan, is a restaurant, a very famous one. And I happened to be doing a show up there. This was a cheese crock they did in the 70s. It originally did have a handle, and it might be that I should hold off because it doesn't have the handle. But it's $3 today on sale, and... I have a whole box of Battle Creek memorabilia that I'm bringing. If you don't know about Teak Fest, check out Rosie's Antique Auction on YouTube and she will tell you all about it. I'm going to be participating in it. There'll be a big Fenton auction. There'll be a bunch of dealers like me having a flea market slash antique show. And it's a really fun event. Uh, she did it twice last year and I participated in one of them and it was so much fun and people came from all over Michigan. It's going to be in Marshall near the uh, bottom of the state, so it's accessible to several states. And if you love beautiful glass, it will be the place to be in May. All right. Of course I know what has to happen. I am so happy that you found one of these. <laughs> and this is a great color. And this is what this is, folks. If you haven't seen one before, it's not a vase. Oh, well, thank you. Let me, I got to see. Oh, yeah, over my nappy hair. That's very nice. Hmm. That's wonderful, yes, you must buy that. Well, I'm not finding a ton of stuff, but I am having a lot of fun today. Just bags and bags and bags of stuff. At least they sort of categorize it. It's not just totally random, you know, there's a bunch of DVDs in one, and a bunch of ornaments in one, and a bunch of CDs in one. I'd sure like to find a bunch of really old cool things in one. 
Okay, folks, we're going to get into some different kind of merchandise on this aisle. It seems somewhat random how things are displayed. I don't think this has a lot of age, but I am noticing that some of these that are from the 70s are starting to sell. I think this one's pretty recent, though. You can tell because all of this stuff is printed on. It's not painted. Oh, another thing for Battle Creek, and oh my gosh. These have Snap, Crackle, and Pop. You can't see it under that tag. It's nine cents. I'm pretty sure for nine cents, even though it's made in China, I probably should buy it. But I already have the American-made one, and I'd rather have the American-made, so I'm going to leave it even though it's super, super cheap. This looks pretty new, but if you find the ones that say Sarsaparilla from the 1980s, those are actually collectible now, even though they were... They weren't knockoffs, they were just sort of new revisions of 1950s flamingos, but this one is even newer than that. This whole idea of putting words on everything is not a new idea. It really originated in the 70s. Canister sets like this, there would have been four. You would have had flour and coffee and sugar, three quarters of a liter. So this one might be a little later in time. It's nice that they're hermetically sealed and it's a red rubber seal rather than a white plastic seal, so that tells us it does have some age. And again, the price is cheap. I would love to see a whole set of these. Jocelyn has found the cartoon character glasses. I assume she's gonna get all of them, otherwise I'm gonna run and take anything she doesn't. Well, 1999, in some quarters that's considered vintage. To me, it's not quite old enough yet, but that Mustang Coupe hasn't been made for a while. And yes, this is an official licensed product. And yes, it was made in China because by 99, pretty much everything was being made in China like this. But there is likely to be a collector now or in the near future because cars age pretty fast. And this actually is old enough in car land. So how much is it? 199 and on sale. Again, I'm going to Michigan for a show. It might be something to get. He found something vintage Christmas. I did. Awesome. Hong Kong. Oh, wow. Yeah, no, those are great for 99 cents. I mean, yeah. come on. Yeah. Can't go wrong. No, exactly. I love the plastic stuff. Yes, plastic. Fantastic. <laughs> <laughs> and by the way, she is rocking the best McDonald's uniform dress under there. It is so cool out of the 70s. <laughs> Thank you. Team scene, Chet Atkins. Oh. Now, most of the usual albums of this era, I mean, this is a great album, but relatively common. Most of them are not worth a whole lot of money, but certain things are, including a few very select religious albums. And unfortunately, it has mainly to do with people who got in trouble. Ah, yes, Jimmy Swaggart, he got into a bit of trouble at one point. That might make that actually a little more collectible. It's like Jim and Tammy Faye records sell for some money because of their problems. Kate Smith, yes, my grandfather really liked her. Betty Arnold. Oh, speaking of Jim and Tammy, there's one right there. I wonder how much records are. I have sold this one before, I think for about five or six dollars. But this one, the cover is in really poor condition. However, somebody will get a kick out of it. And there is the lovely couple, Tammy Faye and her bouffant days. Oh, it matches the outfit, yes. I so. Yeah. <laughs> Kate is all about style. A early American pressed pattern, but that's a pretty common piece. The bigger serving pieces, and particularly the oil lamp, are things to look for in that pattern, though. When I say bigger serving pieces, that excludes the punch bowl set, which is very common. And we just see those everywhere. Cruets are relatively common as well, the oil and vinegar. Ah, I think Jocelyn did clean these out after all. I think this is a Borzoi, Mark Japan, but it's $9 and no discount today. This, on the other hand, the cow is cute, and this is cafe wear, and I think this is half price. Santone by Warwick, China. Made in the USA, 1952. 
that's kind of cute. It's pretty worn though. You can tell looking at the surface, it's definitely spent a lot of time being used there. And this guy's kind of fun, but he's missing his back end, unfortunately. He was a letter sorter. This looks newer the way it's finished. And it is, so we'll leave that. 1099 minus either 50 or 75 percent is a pretty decent price for this. This is Japanese from the 60s. And people do use these around Thanksgiving, but you know, you can tell by the sloppy paint it's not a really great quality one, and I don't want to hold on to it for months waiting for its season. Los Angeles potteries lasted longer than a lot of the other ones. They did a lot of these really big serving pieces, and that was kind of their niche, and I think that's why they stayed in business longer. This with the sponge pattern is going to date to the late 80s or early 90s, which was about the end of them. Lori Gates is the designer, and there's the L.A. Pottery mark, but it has a chip on the back, unfortunately. That's too bad, because with the discount, that might have been worth getting. It was all hand-painted, you see. Back when we used to do hand-painting in this country, when the labor wasn't as expensive as it is now. Scrabble games. Of course, people are buying and rating for the tiles. It looks like someone's already been in here to see what's in here, so let's see how complete it is. I also like the wooden racks. Well, it's got the Q, it's got the X. So I think someone just opened it up and then put it back. You know, it's probably worth getting for this price, which is $5 minus 25%, so $375. People, especially I've noticed in antique stores, dealers will, like if they have a bunch of Lennox, they'll take the letters and spell it and put that out as a placard. So I think I might get this. Now this is the Popeye line of character glasses, 1976. The Coca-Cola company put these out because Pepsi had the rights to the Warner Brothers ones and Coke wanted in on the action too. Again, they're $6 each. It's not that there aren't customers for these, but I just don't think there's a lot of margin. If it was one of the discount tags, then I would consider getting them. This is Cambridge Caprice, and it's one of the deep bowls. It's in the clear. If it was in the blue, it'd be a no-brainer, but, you know, I think green is 75% off, and if that's the case, this kind of is a no-brainer as well because it's a nice deep bowl. And look at that shell design. It's really very pretty and strong. And this is one of the patterns that I expect as clear glass starts to come back into interest is going to be of interest because it was so popular when elegant depression glass was a big thing 30 years ago. It's got some scratches in the bottom and that dissuades me a little bit, but the price is so cheap I might just go ahead and get it anyway. Oh, Manhattan, my pattern. I always like the bowls with the, they look like wings coming off and this is from 1938. That's when it came out. Now, you do have to be careful because you will sometimes see chips in places you wouldn't expect because of these ridges being very edgy, and that one unfortunately has one, so I'm going to have to leave it. Too bad, that's a great price. This bowl is rather pretty and hand-painted under a very bright glaze, and this is Czechoslovakian. It just has a nice look to it, and they actually made it so you could hang it. They knew what they were doing. And that one is $3. You know, that might just be fun and vibrant enough to be worth buying just as a decorative piece for somebody. It definitely has a folksy appearance to it. Okay, it's more dinnerware, but I'm going to take a moment with this. This is Sango, another one of the 1980s era Japanese makers. And this is a Larry Laszlo design. Larry Laszlo is a name from the 80s. He designed for Mikasa. He designed for a number of different companies. And I think there might be something to this, so we're going to take a look. I'm also losing the filling the cart challenge, so I think I need to buy something here. And actually, these do seem to sell this set for, oh, about uh, 15 to $20 plus shipping. And so I think I'm going to check this out. I, I always take the tape off and make sure that, number one, the tape's not going to take the finish off. With these, it shouldn't because it's under the glaze, but also to make sure there's no chips that they're hiding. So we'll do that, and if it passes muster, then we'll buy them. Okay, all is well. Yeah, I think we'll go ahead and get these. I'm curious to see how they do. This is a cute quarters plate, 1950s, 
the edging with the gold is what seems to be the appeal because the rest is just transfer wear and various companies made them here in the United States. The price is certainly right. That horrible sound that you hear is all of the damaged and broken things being crushed into cullet. Very fun color on this rather contemporary vase, but it's a great shape. I think we have a bowling ball in here. Oh, we don't, darn. Because the balls are what people want if they're interesting colors and they use them as yard art. Okay, this is a very strange thing here. It's plastic. I thought it might be glass. I guess you're just supposed to hold this. It seems like you could use it as a weapon. That might be their last cocktail party. Thrift store pricing depends oftentimes on who priced it, and they're rather proud of this particular piece, which is a Longa Burger. And Longa Burger baskets are nice, and they do sell, but that's a pretty full price for a retail customer, not for me. Having said that, this is a really fun store, and there are some cool things, and we're all finding stuff, so I think this was a good stop. Cornflower Blue is still selling, but these more common pieces, you know, you've got to price them right. And well, $4.99, I mean, that actually is priced right. Certainly, that could sell for $12 or $14 in an antique mall. Uh, the 1900 Paris World's Fair logo, that's cute. This is something that was done recently, but it is the original logo. But when you look at the back, California Pantry made in China, so this is maybe 15 or 20 years old at most. Kate has the party going on. <laughs> well, there is one more category left to find, and it's up near the front. I know I'm more trusting than a lot of people. I just left my cart right here and figured that people would respect it. And they did. Wow, some people are finding a lot of stuff. And I can see why. I mean, this place is just vast. It's one of the biggest thrift stores I've ever been in in my life. Maybe the biggest. All right, more household appliances. These all seem to be newer. They even have tools. The hats are something to look for. Let's see how old the Orioles are. Yeah, well, they're written on, that's a problem. Sometimes when you see foamy fronts, that's an indication of earlier, like 70s, 80s era. These all seem to be newer baseball caps. Give the ties a quick scan here. This one certainly looks like it has some age. A whole lot of colors to work with though, and it's got a stain, so we're gonna leave that. Be fun to find something painted silk or... This one I know is newer, made in Korea, but that is a Disney tie. And see, there's probably a customer for that. And it's $1.99. I think just because I sell in Florida, that's probably something I should seriously consider taking. I like the colors in this one. Let's see who the maker is on this. Unfortunately, they put the tag, the, their tags right over the original tags, which means you have to rip them off to see, and that actually is an indication of age. Well, here we go. Italian-styled Bellini made in USA. I think that's going to go with me for $1.99. Yeah. I'm going to watch Jocelyn's cart while she goes to get her purse, and I'm going to snoop a little bit. She got some Thai gold pieces there. Looks like enough to make up a small set. And see, she knows some things I don't because she deals in some areas I don't. This is a nice bag for $4.99. I'll have to ask her why. She got that one. This is a cool paper hat, of course. We had fun with that. This is a Sirocco Scotty dog. I see the bookend there. That is neat. And then there's this happy set from the 60s, and she walked around the store until she put all of it back together again. Love the shape of the coffee pot on that. So she got some fun stuff. Look at me being all Snoopy in her stuff. Oh, and there is a signed piece there. Interesting. Yep, that's a cute piece of studio pottery, hand-painted, so... Always interesting to see what other people buy. Okay, this is an Olympic tie, Team USA. Oh, you're back, okay. That was fast. Okay, collections by Andazia. But which Olympics is this? A lot of the proceeds would go to the Olympic team when they license these kind of ties. 
it's not really clear to me when this was made. I don't think it's wildly old, so I think we're going to leave it. And here's another one by that same company that I found before. Because we can see enough of the label to see that it's the same and it's made in the USA of imported Italian silk. And for that price, I'm going to give it a shot. I know not so many men have to wear ties these days, but if you're going to wear a tie, why not wear a really nice one? And those prices are cheap enough that I think we'll find customers. This one says Dino Collection made in USA. And a lot of these, I think, are late 80s and early 90s. But again, that's a fun color. We're not really seeing this sort of stuff made in this country anymore. And... If I can get it out of this pile, I will take it. These plastic tartan thermoses, they do actually sell sometimes, but it's missing its cup. This is all color coordinated here, and I just want to make sure we're not missing anything. This is nice looking, but I'll bet it's Portuguese from the 90s. Doesn't have the weight of an older piece. Let's take a look at the jewelry counter here. I kind of like the leaf with the little stones in it. The couplings with the dice are fun. They're going to be $6 with the discount, but I have a lot of couplink buyers, and that is interesting enough. I think I'll take those. Newer jewelry here, a buckle. That's a CB buckle from the 1970s when sea being was the thing. Someone's doing a lot of work shuffling and rearranging here. And I see a very nice cameo there, but they have a big price on that, which I understand because it's probably a gold or gold filled edge. I may look at it anyway. They have a pocket watch here, but it's gonna be 75 with the discount. And that's all I get for them myself. It's nice that they actually are showing jewelry. A lot of thrift stores are not anymore. That's actually a big showy piece in the aluminum there, but I don't think it's wildly old. I do kind of like that enamel pendant at the end of those green stone beads though, and that's only $2.50. Just one little box. $133. Wow. Oh, yeah, that's, that's pretty amazing. <laughs> well, that is an 18 karat gold cameo, and I did look at it, but it's half price today. This one is neat. It's blue. It's just got a good look. I don't think it's by anybody, but it looks 1960s. But uh, $14.99 and 20% off, or 25% off. I think I could do that one. I would like this, please. Yes, please. And then there's one more down here I'd like to see. I'd like to see the cufflinks. Yes, please. We're going to take a look at the cat. I think this is a JJ pin. Oh, yeah, that's only $4.99. There's our signature. Yes, I'd like that too, please. May I see the gold piece next? Mm hmm. This one just has a good look, but it's actually rather lightweight. We'll leave that. No? Uh, no, thank you. Okay. Changed my mind. I like it. Which one? The, the one I saw. Yes, that one, please. Yes. Yeah, yeah, I'll... Yeah, she's got good carving. I don't know that there's a ton of margin in her, but it's 18 karat. I'll take it. I'm going to take that, yes. I think I saved the best for last on this place. The challenges were to find the best stuff down an aisle, and I lost that one, and to fill the cart the most, and I lost that one. I think that Jacob won the first one, and Jocelyn won the second one, but I think I might win for spending the most. If you enjoyed this video, check out this one. Also, click thumbs up to like this video, and check the description for information about our Patreon, our memberships. We've got a lot of different levels with different perks and bonus videos and early content. Also, please do check out our website, theantiquenomad.com, for appraisal help. And we'll see you again for more adventures in the antique and vintage community soon. Bye for now.